it's a couple minutes past four, so I'd like to go ahead and call the uh, meeting, the October 27th meeting of the Salina City Commission to order. Would the clerk please call the roll, please? Mayor Benier. Here. Commissioner Jelka. Here. Commissioner Larson. Here. Commissioner Peck. Here. Commissioner Perney. Here. I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll let you leave. Uh, we have an additional item to add to the agenda, uh, item 8.4 under administration. Mayor Veneer, I move that we add item 8.4 to today's agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, add item 8.4, which is a resolution 086566, uh, establishing an improvement district for Planet Avenue and Key Avenue in conjunction with the Coles Department development. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Now it's time for a citizens forum, time for citizens to come before the commission with uh, their comments uh, concerning anything not on the official agenda. Is there anyone here from the public this morning or this afternoon? If not, we have no awards or proclamations, no public hearings or items scheduled for a certain time, so we'll go into the consent agenda. Item 6.1, approve the minutes of October 20th, 2008. Item 6.2, resolution number 086560, authorizing agreement with Madison Farms Incorporated for the service related to the transportation land application of municipal wastewater biosolids. Item 6.3, resolution number 086563, authorizing a license agreement with Karen Pratt to allow the installation of a private water service line within the public right of way of North 13th Street. Item 6.4, resolution number 086564, authorizing a license agreement with Slina Partners LLC to allow the installation and maintenance of landscaping in the center median of Key Avenue west of South 9th Street. Are there any items that uh, Commissioner would like pulled from the consent agenda? If not, accept motion. May I move that we. Ms. Tasco, do you have a. Yes, one item. Uh, as far as the license agreement for uh, Karen Pratt, uh, just had a conversation with her a few minutes ago. She was out of town and did not receive the license agreement in her uh, mail as of today and would like to have some time to look that over. So I'd like to ask if that could be postponed till next Monday. All right. So we will pull item uh, 6.3 from the consent agenda. Um, is there a motion to that effect? I'll move to postpone item 6.3 until next uh, week's meeting, and then we'll third meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, postpone item 6.3 to the, I believe it's the November 2nd? Third. Third, third meeting. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Concerning item 6.1, point 2, and point 4. Um, move approval of the remaining items of the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the remaining consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. There is no development business. Move on to administration. Item 8.1, second reading ordinance number 08-10469, admitting chapter 8, article 3 of the Salina Code, pertaining to building contractor and skilled trade contractor licensing. Uh, ordinance number 08-10469 was passed on first reading October 20th, and there have been no comments received. Since then, is there any public comment? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. May I move that we approve ordinance number 0810469 on second reading? Second. 
It's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 0810469 on second reading. Would the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Jilka? Aye. Commissioner Larson? Aye. Commissioner Peck? Aye. Commissioner Perney? Aye. Mayor Veneer? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Item 8.2 Authorize the mayor to execute interlocal disposal agreements. Mr. Frazier. Uh, mayor and commissioners, uh, currently the city of Salina has uh, interlocal disposal agreements uh, with the counties of McPherson, Ottawa, Lincoln, and Ellsworth. These agreements allow for the disposal of solid waste generated in these counties to be disposed at the Salina landfill at the same rate that Saline County residents pay. Uh, as of November 1st, these rates will increase to $30 per ton. Over the last two years, the city of Salina has uh, uh, handled about 100,000 tons each year. Uh, of that amount, about 18,700 tons have come into the facility from other counties under our interlocal disposal agreements. Staff believes that uh, we could take an additional 20,000 tons per year of additional material. Um, in uh, 2000, uh, our landfill consulting engineering firm, CDM, conducted a study which concluded that our optimum peak operational efficiency uh, with current resources would be about 120,000 tons per year. Beyond that point, additional personal equipment uh, uh, operational expenses would have to be budgeted into the operations. Uh, the additional 20,000 tons of solid waste would generate uh, revenue uh, for the facility, which is necessary to balance the budget and to offset the rising cost of operations, contract services, and capital purchases. These extra funds are necessary at this time to ensure that we stay in the black. However, on the other hand, additional tonnage will decrease the expected life of the facility, which is now estimated to be 71 years. Based on the additional 20,000 tons per year disposed at the facility, the expected life could fall to 59.2 years. One of the goals of the Solid Waste Management Plan is to reduce the amount of waste going into the landfill uh, from Saline County. However, if the total tonnage at the landfill is reduced from 100,000 tons to 75,000 tons, the cost of the operations will change by a very little amount, uh, but revenues will drop substantially. This is a typical good news, bad news scenario when discussing landfill operation efficiencies and solid waste recycling reduction efforts. One method of addressing the uh, conflict is to accept more waste from outside of the county as the local uh, waste stream is reduced due to recycling and other measurements. Uh, this uh, permits us to keep rates uh, at a more reasonable level while still meeting the goal of the Solid Waste Management Plan. The City Commission has uh, expressed their support of maximizing revenues at the landfill and that uh, they have authorized staff to negotiate with potential customers to expand the amount of tonnage uh, to a level which uh, currently landfill operations can maintain operational efficiencies uh, without expanding additional resources. Uh, staff uh, therefore has developed a plan to offer discount rates to customers which provide large amounts of solid waste uh, to the facility for an extended period of time. By offering a discounted rate, staff believes the city will be in a better position to negotiate with the other surrounding counties. Uh, to come to the Salina landfill. Other disposal facilities are competitive with their rates and can offer less than what the city of Salina can offer. However, it is the high transportation rates uh, that these counties must pay up and beyond the disposal rate, which helps uh, make uh, our rates attractive. Although private firms can offer uh, what they choose as a municipality in our operations, we must maintain openness and equity with the parties that we conduct business with. Uh, each customer uh, was offered a choice between a one-year contract with no discount, a two to four-year contract with various rates, and a five-year contract with various rates. Depending on how much tonnage the customer guarantees to bring uh, for what length of time, staff has determined a rate uh, that the customer would pay that we felt was competitive in the marketplace. If a customer fails to meet the annual amount of tonnage guaranteed, they will receive a penalty. The penalty for, uh, is a forfeiture of any additional tonnage uh, for the term of the contract and that they will have to refund to the city any discount that they had received 
from the contract. Staff has uh, negotiated the following contracts with each of our uh, high volume interlocal disposal customers uh, considering a base rate of $30 per ton. Uh, McPherson County has chosen a three year term uh, agreement uh, which provides them uh, with a, uh, a rate of $29 a ton and these rates are really based on 96.6% of what the base price is. So when the base price changes, so would the, uh, the contracted amount. In this uh, case here is that it turns out to be $29 a ton. Ottawa County uh, has uh, uh, agreed to a five-year term contract uh, at 89.3% uh, of the base, which works out to $29.50 per ton. Lincoln County, a five-year agreement, also paying $29.50 a ton. Ellsworth County has chosen a five-year agreement, uh, but they don't have any solid waste operations that they control themselves. They have private companies that uh, handle that within uh, Ellsworth County. So this agreement with them basically authorizes uh, uh, Ellsworth uh, County to dispose of their trash in Saline County. Uh, Select uh, Enterprises is within uh, Ellsworth County. They have chosen a five-year agreement uh, with a rate of $29.50 per ton. Uh, once negotiations are completed and contracts are signed uh, with the current interlocal landfill disposal partners, staff will approach other counties in the area and offer landfill disposal contract options. Uh, it would be from these new customers outside of Saline County that additional revenues would most likely be generated to cover the landfill tipping fee discounts offered in these contracts plus provide supplementary, uh, supplementary uh, revenues to keep rates as low as possible for all users. Uh, some um, uh, discussions uh, have already taken place with other counties and strong in interest has been expressed by one. Uh, this county disposes of about 8,000 tons per year. If under contract with the city, they could help generate an additional annual amount of approximately $235,000 in new revenue. Revenues generated by uh, accepting additional tonnage at the landfill will help to support the rising cost of our annual landfill budget of approximately uh, $3 million. Fund balances in the Solid Waste Fund have been declining slowly, and while we still have sufficient revenues for operations, we will not be able to fund the equipment replacement over the long term without extending the planned replacement date of the equipment beyond uh, what which we think is prudent. Uh, the disposal discounts offered in uh, these proposed uh, four agreements with our landfill customers amount to a total of $17,776.50. That's 2.8% of the $629,000 uh, which we would generate at the base rate of $30 per ton. The plan requires additional tonnage from either an existing customer or at least one of the new uh, contractual customers to provide balance uh, to the amount given away in the discount. A new customer or an existing customer uh, disposing of an annual amount of 1,000 tons would generate $29,500 in landfill revenues. This would more than cover the dollars discounted for these four groups. Uh, staff recommends the City Commission approve the Landfill Disposal Discount Plan and authorize the Mayor to sign the Interlocal Disposal Agreements as presented. We'd be happy to uh, answer your questions on this. Questions to staff? Yeah, necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is the uh, amount brought in being adversely affected by the current rate? Well, we're bringing in we're we're bringing in enough tons right now uh, to be able to uh, to handle uh, for the most part our expenses. One of the things that uh, that we're experiencing is is that uh, we're having these revenues decline, and that uh, this continued rate of decline uh, is going to have an effect on our capital uh, replacement program that we have for equipment, and that uh, what it means is is that we're having to delay the purchase of our equipment much longer than what we would like to. Uh, we're already experiencing that next year uh, with uh, a dozer. 
Uh, those are very expensive pieces of equipment. They're over $500,000 on that cost, but we're going to be experiencing more and more of that as time goes on. Yeah. So I think what we're looking at is being able to generate more revenues that are going to be able to make us more efficient in our operations. Uh, that's going to be able to put more money into that fund to be able to fund our equipment replacement programs and to stay up with our current costs. Uh, the effort is to try to be able to attract new money back into the system and that it's a very competitive market out there and that uh, by offering rates that are a little bit lower, particularly now where, where transportation costs are so high, it gives us a little bit of a chance to try to be able to encourage some of these other uh, counties in, in our, our trade area uh, to come our way. We've contacted a number of uh, different counties. There is one that is uh, very interested. As a matter of fact, they've made a decision to go to a new disposal site. Uh, we are one of three locations which they're considering at this time. Commissioners, I, I would say that uh, the, the difference in the discount that almost 18000 is pretty insignificant in the total amount, and it's a great trade-off to get commitments of five years on all of these but one and get a three-year from McPherson County. Um, uh, some of these are, are located, some of these areas are located fairly close to other landfills who are sort of in a competitive market, and so to be able to uh, have an agreement for multiple years is, is well worth the, the minimal discount that we're offering up here. So I think in the end, it's very much worth it. Well, I don't think the discount is as much the issue, for me anyway, as w at what point um, does the scale get tipped the other way? If we had 10 more municipalities within range that were interested in this service and it would decrease the life of our landfill by, say, an additional 12 years, at what point does the money brought in, um, or at what, at what point does the decrease in the life of our landfill actually outweigh the additional monies brought in? That's a good question. It, as you know from the past conversations, we have a few issues that we're dealing with with the landfill. We have a competitive market issue which is out there. Uh, we have just a pure financial issue where we're trying to balance a budget for the operations. And we also have a conservation issue which is how long do we want the landfill to last. And the, uh, uh, as you recall, we did talk about many months ago the landfill, uh, uh, the estimated life of the landfill. There were some questions as to the uh, uh, methodology used, but probably somewhere in the 80 years, I would say 75 to 80 years right now. Uh, 71. 71. 71. That, was that based on the last estimate? Correct. Okay. The last estimate was flawed, though, because it used a straight line. Uh, it, it took the last year's, it took the use where we had the roofing issues uh, or disposal as a result of all the hailstorms. It added it on. It then took that amount and just took it straight out. It didn't take into consideration we're not going to have a hailstorm every year. So that's probably, relatively speaking, a little bit low. And I think what we looked at is, is from the operational and utilization perspective, the maximum, that we wanted to be between 100 and 110,000 tons per year? A hundred, maximum 120,000. 120, okay. We felt that if we could stay right in that range, that we could maximize the, the budgetary aspect of the landfill. Also, uh, pretty well maintain that life out there uh, and, and, and be able to compete. So I think what this does, we can always say no, by the way, if we want to do that at some point. So if we if we get up to 110, 115, if we get into that range, we'll be actually very, very happy. But we can always say no at you know 120 or even a little bit less than that if we want to do that. Uh, so all in all, this still puts us in a pretty good, pretty good position. Jason, uh, just another thing to add. There's There's been quite a bit of discussion on this over the I know over the last probably seven or years or so uh, on, on what to do with this. And, and some of that discussion got back into the, to the talk about a planning curve and that assuming that these numbers are correct and that this would reduce the, the life of the landfill to 60 years, assuming that that is, that is correct, is that one of the things that we've talked about in the past is, is that um, 60 years is a long time and that a lot can happen over that time uh, with changes in technology, changes in our operations uh, that would not necessarily be a negative uh, for us. That's a long time out to plan. So typically when the city does their, their planning programs, we have, we have a annual planning, we have five-year planning. I mean, how many, how many organizations actually have 60-year planning cycles in that? And that was something I know that, uh, that was discussed quite a bit in length uh, five, six, seven years ago and we, we talked about this. And that um, the, um, the, the other part of that is, too, is that um, with the, um, 
uh, with a landfill the way that it is, is that um, uh, we may find is that um, uh, this would be something that would help to be able to defray those costs over time so that uh, uh, we keep rates low for customers uh, here and now and then, and then also in the future. Um, if we don't do, do these kinds of things and, we, and our expenses increase, the rates are going to go up. I don't know if Rod's here or not, but, but Rod has done some calculations on, on the estimates on here and that uh, basically I think the, the, the long and short of it is is that uh, if we don't attract new money to be able to help the facility is that we're looking at the possibility of having to raise rates in the near future and they could be raised substantially and that that's going to affect everybody here and now uh, because those rates will be passed on to all consumers. So the idea is if we can bring new money into the system that's going to help us pay our bills today to be able to keep rates low for today and still have a reasonable planning cycle that, that's even about 60 years that, uh, that would help us to be able to prepare for even that, uh, that uh, time when we're looking at either expanding the landfill to adjacent land or building a new landfill at a different location. Further questions of staff? <clears throat> Any public comment? I'll bring it back to the commission for action. I move that we authorize the mayor to sign the interlocal disposal agreement as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to authorize the mayor to sign the interlocal disposal agreements. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Mm -hmm. Motion passes 5-0. Item 8.3, resolution number 086565, authorizing a grant agreement with OCCK Incorporate mm -hmm. for the citywide public transportation program. Mr. Frazier. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, the City of Salina has uh, indicated support of OCCK to provide a public transportation program which would include a fixed route bus service and an on-call paratransit bus service. The Kansas Department of Transportation has agreed to provide 70% of the fixed route operation expenses and 80% of the fixed route capital expenses. According to the proposed grant agreement, uh, the city would provide the remaining 30% of the fixed route operational expenses and 20% of the fixed route capital expenses. Uh, there have been uh, two public hearings and an additional meeting with residents uh, providing comments uh, and concerns about the proposed fixed route bus route and the bus stops. These meetings were on August 27th, September 24th, and then again on October 16th. Uh, the largest concern expressed at these meetings uh, from these property owners was that they didn't really want to have the, uh, the bus stop located uh, in their front uh, uh, yard or at their property. Uh, the public comments range from questions about how the routes were designed to concerns about having their property chosen for the bus stop location. Some members of the audience voiced concerns about the negative impacts that the uh, bus stop uh, would have on their private property. They expressed concerns about property values going down, possible damage to their property, people standing in front of their homes at all hours of the day and night, persons walking on their property, uh, having to pick up litter from the bus riders and increase liability to homeowners with more people walking uh, on their sidewalks to get to the bus stops. Uh, a bus stop review team uh, was made up of members of OCCK, the City Engineering Division of the Public Works Department and the Salina Police Department. Uh, they met to discuss all the concerns and the complaints. Uh, in addition, they reviewed all of the 116 bus stop locations to ensure that they met the bus stop location criteria for establishing an appropriate stop. Uh, the grant agreement before you at this time is with OCCK to provide a public transportation program which offers a fixed route bus service and paratransit service within the city of Salina. The term of the multi-year agreement is from November 1st, 2008 until December 31st, 2011. 
the fixed route bus service is expected to run uh, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday and on Saturdays from 9 to 5 p.m. on Monday through Friday during the peak times which those hours are from 6 to 9 and from uh, th 3 to uh, 6 buses will run every 30 minutes peak time schedules uh, will be accomplished by adding uh, three additional 20 passenger buses into the system during the time frame. During non-peak hours, uh, the time span between the stops will be one hour. The service uh, will not operate on uh, Sundays and on some holidays, holidays as specified in the schedule. Uh, the start date for the service is yet to be firmly established. One call underground utility locates have been started, but no sign installation has begun. The uh, projected start date at this time looks to be sometime in late November. Uh, no uh, parking will be uh, uh, required, uh, no parking signs will be required at each bus stop. The curbs at each bus stop location will be painted yellow to inform citizens of the uh, parking restrictions. The amount of no parking areas required at each location is different, mostly due to the different site distance problems at each location. The authority to post these areas as no parking uh, and to enforce the restrictions can already be found within city codes. It provides the city manager authority to designate the appropriate areas and mark them accordingly. Section 38-1 incorporates and amends the uh, standard traffic ordinance for parking and prohibits parking next to the curb painted yellow. The standard uh, traffic ordinance uh, does allow for a vehicle to park temporarily to load and unload property and or passengers where official signs prohibit parking. The initial cost of the fixed route bus service to the city is about $212,135 through 2008, uh, which will help fund the cost of the purchase of the buses, staffing, and run the system. The city's estimated cost in 2009 is expected to be $278,000. Uh, it will then be uh, $298,420 in 2010 and then increase to $341,191 in 2011. The per uh, transit um, uh, bus service is estimated to cost about $123,000 per year. However, these estimated costs for the paratransit bus service are unknown due to the implementation of the fixed route bus service and the effect that it will have on the paratransit service. Staff recommends the City Commission adopt resolution number 086565 authorizing the mayor to sign the grant agreement with OCCK. Uh, we have Pat Walerius with OCCK with us today. And also would like to say is for any citizens that would want to see the buses, we have those uh, upstairs on the south side of the building in the Circle Drive. Be happy to answer your questions. Questions of staff. How, how many stops were eliminated? I know that there was a lot of um, controversy on that. So I, I believe that we had somewhere in the neighborhood around 165 to start with, somewhere in that area, and and I somewhere in that area, and that we're down to about 116. 116. 116 total. Okay. Yes. So quite a few were eliminated. That's correct. Okay. Could you uh, better spell out the financial commitment of the city? We gave a percentage early on, and you projected out uh, three years. Uh, we're looking at three hundred forty thousand a year on down the road, or are we going to go up to half a million? Or Well, the way I understand this is, is that um, the um, uh, city is going to be having OCCK provide the fixed route system plus the paratransit system. And that the paratransit system, which is the on-call system that we have, uh, is expected to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $123,000 each year. Now, there is some, some feeling on the part of the city that this may go down because of extra people using the, the fixed route service, but we really don't know that. Uh, but we, we expect that to happen. Uh, on the other hand, is that we're having to fund uh, the, uh, the expenses for the fixed route service 
and that in uh, 2008, so far this year, we're expecting to spend uh, $212,000. Now that cost is going to increase over time. Uh, and then next year, we're looking at $278,000 and then in, in, uh, to increase in 2011 to $341,000. Uh, now, I, the way I understand this is, is that we are paying 30%, what this is, is 30% of the operational cost and also 20% of the capital cost for, for buses. I don't know if Rod, if you wanted to elaborate on that, or if that sounds... Commissioner, right? uh, well, Rod's coming up, I'd like to, to comment a little bit too. Part of this uh, presumes certain uh, years where the capital items would be replaced, replacement of buses and so forth. In the uh, section six on page three, it talks about the paratransit services, and it uh, it does uh, provide for they're used only would be used only now for ADA compliant supplemental demand, and there's a registration. So those who would be using them, let's say today, some of those folks would not be able to use them under this. They would need to use the fixed route system. So we do expect that to go down. We just don't know until how how much it will be until we get some experience under our belt with regards to the use of the registration. Um, the other factor that's probably a big factor in future cost of the fixed route is is what is the demand going to be? Uh, do we find that whether peak or off peak, we're not keeping up with the demand? It's more than we anticipated. Be a nice problem to have, but certainly you'd have to then ask yourself: Does that mean we need to run more frequently? Uh, does that mean we need to have more buses? Does that mean we have to have larger buses? So there's some questions that would come into play if, in fact, we felt that the demand was was higher than uh, than what we uh, feel it will be. Uh, and then the final thing is: Is there are three routes? Uh, we've talked about the routes a lot, but ideally the town would have, I believe, five routes. So there's still questions, too, about when this gets started, are the places in town where, where we think there's higher demand than where the routes go, and do we really need to look at adding routes or changing routes and some of those questions. So it's still a bit of an experiment right now, but uh, what would probably affect the cost more than anything uh, would be in the impact of uh, future demand and if it's a lot more than we anticipate for whatever reason. The uh, projected expenses that you see in the contract that Mike was talking about are consistent with uh, what we talked about in, in, I believe it was April when we first discussed this system. The uh, uh, 2011 amount of 341000 includes the first $40,000 increment of the bus replacement cycle. Uh, we'll have six buses on the system. We anticipate replacing approximately two every year. They're anticipated to last three years. The $40,000 is our share of that bus cost uh, plus the cost of the additional equipment and rendering it ready to provide this type of service. In, in other words, uh, uh, the grantor agency, which is KDOT, uh, will pay for the basic bus, but they don't pay for things like the fare boxes and the other improvements that have to be made uh, to make it suitable for uh, uh, a fixed route transit. That is, is on us. Um, and that is, uh, that's also consistent with what we, we had talked about in April. Uh, the $123,000 for the paratransit, that is uh, the uh, same amount we paid to OCCK last year for paratransit. In addition, last year we paid, um, I believe it was about 30000 to the Commission on Aging and about twenty to Hotline for uh, paratransit type service. Those expenses have gone away. Uh, so there is some offset to, to the, the increase for the fixed route. Does that clarify anything? I know we were shown a bushel full of numbers last April. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to, I had a question I'm going to ask him, I'm not sure if it's possible to answer, but if you can try. The current fee structure is designed to recover what percentage of the cost of this operation? It's a well at a dollar. I think we estimate, uh, and Pat, you can correct me if I'm wrong. When we get to peak demand, about a hundred thousand, ninety to a hundred thousand trips. First year we're estimating around sixty. So sixty the first year, about sixty thousand okay. trips. The first year is estimated, but if we get to peak, if we're anything close to where Hutchinson is, we think we'll be ninety to a hundred thousand. So roughly sixty thousand dollars upwards to a hundred thousand dollars of the total cost of the operation. Well, for the total fares, fair from revenue. the fares, yeah. yeah.
contract has quite a bit of information about uh, re requirements on OCCK for their employees and personnel, but I didn't see anything in there. Do they have the full right to establish rules and regulations for the riders? And, uh, you know, such as eating, drinking, smoking on the buses, things like that. Yes, we have. Is that in the contract? I didn't really, I couldn't really see where it was in there, but. Uh, no, it's it's not included in the contract. Therefore, it'd be reserved for them to be able to do that. That is our understanding. They, yes, it's not our problem. <laughs> Reckless. That's correct. Okay. Further questions of staff. <coughs> Public comment. See so now I'll bring it back to the commission for action. I had a question I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Valerius. Uh, are, are all the drivers they're going to be hired going to be full time or all part time or what is the breakdown on that? Mm. Yeah, we can answer that better than I can. What we have Could I get you to come to the microphone, please, and give your name and address? I'm Debbie Atkinson. I'm the transportation coordinator at OCCK. Um, but we're going to have um, six full-time drivers and six part-time drivers and then subs for the fixed routes. Okay. So. Thank you. Again, it's back for the commission. Move that resolution number 086565 authorizing a grant agreement with OCCK Inc. for the citywide uh, public transportation program be approved as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, adopt resolution 086565 authorizing a grant agreement with OCCK Inc. for the citywide public transportation program. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Item 8.4, resolution number 086566, setting forth the findings and determinations of advisability and authorizing improvements in the replot of, of the Lambert's edition. <coughs> Mike, <laughs> that's not what mine says, but go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Th this is a last-minute addition, and I'll try to walk you through the details. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, the Coles building as well as the site development is well underway. And as you may or may not recall, the development agreement that we entered into in April provided two scenarios under which the developer could request special assessment financing of public improvements. One of those scenarios related to the possibility of a traffic signal, which was dependent on completion of a traffic study and later became, it was determined that the warrants weren't met and that wasn't necessary. The other provision was for uh, public improvements related to Planet Avenue and Key Avenue, since those would be public streets. And so the public components of that were eligible for special assessment financing. Then additionally, it becomes a timing issue of what work has are, is yet to be commenced uh, at the time that we receive and process the petition. And so here in the last, over the weekend and, and Friday and today, we went in, in, into considerable effort to identify what work had been uh, un undertaken, what was eligible for special assessment financing, and, and uh, with the help of staff and bond counsel and some ongoing discussions with the developer's uh, legal representation, we concluded the, what you have before you is the remaining work that's eligible for special assessment financing per the statutes and is provided by the development agreement. And so the number that is uh, being requested represents basically four items. <coughs> One of those being uh, concrete work associated with the sidewalks, um, sidewalk ramps, pavement striping, and additional concrete work on approaches and, and related items. Subgrade work's already been commenced as well as asphalt work, and so those items are no longer eligible for special assessment financing. Consequently, the resulting number for the special assessment district is uh, $31,047.50. Uh, we have the necessary paperwork in terms of the application. Um, they, as an applicant, do represent the requisite percentage of the overall property. They, they essentially will be uh, owning all of the property that's subject to the special assessments. And uh, at this point, 
everything's in order for your uh, action on the resolution authorizing uh, formation of the special assessment district for the Coles project in the amount of $31,047.50. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions of staff. Okay, this relates directly to the 6.4 uh, consent agenda item. This builds the street so that we can license the landscaping of the island. Well, the, yeah, they're somewhat interrelated, but right. yes, this is special assessment so financing this, of this those This has to be completed before the license agreement we approved earlier. Well, really uh, not necessarily. I, in terms of timing, uh, because of the timing of when they submitted the petition and, it, and it's been brought to you, we've had to scale back what's eligible for special assessment financing down to that 31,000 number. But I don't know that one is dependent on the other as much as they do interrelate. Okay. Further questions? Public comment. Bring it back to the Commission. Mayor, I move for approval of the advisability and authorization of resolution number 08 6566 related to establishing a special improvement district for the public street improvements to Planet Avenue and Key Avenue in conjunction with the Coles Development Project. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 086566. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Do we have any other business? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move we adjourn. Second. Move and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes 5-0.